Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Uh, sorry about the delay this morning. Um, I finally fixed my camera. Um, today, we are going to be reviewing uh, Louis' accent from One Direction. Now, I was doing some research as to where Louis is from, and research he's from where Dos Louis is from. He's from Doncaster in Yorkshire. So I've got a few videos uh, lined up on my tablet, and we can listen to it together, just like how we did with Hermione um, last week. And I'm also taking suggestions from you guys about other people that you want to see me analyze. So let's go through and start analyzing. So this is actually from a radio interview and a bunch of interviewers are interviewing Louis and let's kind of analyze his kind of accent features and try to figure out whether we can replicate it. So his accent isn't a London accent. Now, let's see whether I can even replicate it. 24 hours, right? For up to now, tell yes. people what you've been doing. Well, it's today, it's today that's proper crazy because yesterday we did Fallon and it was like, uh, I just had sound chicks, that was all right, and then did the show. But today, yeah, I got up at about four to do my first warm up. You guys are probably used to waking up at this time in morning. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not very. <laughs> so let me know in the comments um, if that was a, a difficult kind of line to understand. Um, let's Let's replay that. Up to now, tell yes. people what you've been doing. Well, it's today. It's today that's proper crazy because yesterday we did Fallon and it was like uh, I just had sound chicks, that was all right, and then did the show. But today, yeah, I got up at about four to do my first warm up. You guys are probably used to waking up at this time in morning. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so I got up at four to do my first to do my first warm up. To do my first warm up. So he says to do me first warm up. Now one of the first features of this accent and dialect is the fact that he says me um, instead of my. So he says, to, instead of to, to do my work, uh, warm up, it's to do me warm up, to do me work warm up. So that's a, a really interesting feature. And he also kind of repeats that uh, throughout the video as well. So I just had sound checks, that was all right. And then did the show. So he did, he did sound checks, which are all right. Sound checks, which are all right. So he did sound checks, which are all right. So that basically means uh, in a studio, when you're practicing for music, you have to do a sound check first. So I also did a sound check before this live stream, just making sure that you guys can actually hear me. Um, so when he's singing, um, he would do kind of like sound checks before um, any, any one of his live shows. So he said the sound checks were all right, which means they were good. It was all working properly. Let's uh, listen to that uh, bit yeah, again because he, he is speaking. To do me. He is speaking really quickly, so let's just listen to that again. Because yesterday we did Fallon and it was like uh, I just had sound checks, that was all right, and then did the show. Did but the show? Today, yeah, I got up at about four to do my first warm up. You guys are probably used to waking up at this time in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I'm not. You guys are probably used to waking up at this time in the morning. You guys are probably used to waking up at this time in the morning. Right, so clearly four o'clock <laughs> is very early. And he's basically saying, you guys, as in the radio presenters, you guys are used to waking up very early in the morning to present for the radio show. So he's basically saying, I, I had to wake up at four, but the fact that you guys do that pretty much every day means that it's not really an issue for you. Oh, I'm not very good, you know what I mean? So, um, and then, yeah, we've just been at the Today Show to sound check, run over here to do right. this interview, back to Today Show to do the uh, show. So, yeah, it's a proper release day, as it should be. Yeah. Now, are you somebody... It's a proper release day. So, proper is a really kind of a British phrase there. Um, to use the word proper, um, you could say that's proper good, or it's a proper, it's a proper meal, or it's a proper... It's a proper thing. So if it's a proper thing, it's a really good, solid and um, substantial thing that's happening. Um, let me just kind of say hello to those of you who have joined us today. Um, <laughs> Rizal says, why do people speak so fast, man? I think this is one of the major reasons why we from the subcontinent don't get them. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it's not, It's I don't really hear it as fast thing is I'm having to slow myself down 
for my live streams. Um, so you're absolutely right. People do speak quickly and it is it is difficult to get used to. So that's why we're like practicing um, listening, our honing in our listening skills um, so that we could kind of, we can kind of understand conversations. Um, let me just say hello to a few more people. Uh, Divyanj, uh, good to see you. Um, a Roop, Gucci, thank you everybody for joining this live stream. Uh, Morlik says, question. Don't mean to interrupt, but why do people why do people say he don't know when it should be he doesn't know? He don't yeah, I haven't I haven't really heard people say he don't know that. He don't know. No, I've never really heard people say he don't know. It might be like an accent or dialect thing. Um Div it's uh Divya Divyanch says it's pronounced Divyanch. Okay. Aditya, thank you for joining. Right, let's take a listen of some a few more uh, sections of this video who knows your schedule or you just are like, where am I going? You just like let people just like kind of drag you around. Um, uh, yeah, it kind of a bit of both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, present so the presenter, the radio presenter, I think she's got an American accent. I don't know which state she's from, but I think it sounds like a like an American accent here. But we're not going to analyze her accent. Uh, let me know if you want me to analyze any American accents in the future. But right now we're analyzing Louis's accent. I am always checking my phone to remind myself of schedule. Um, and I I always, I'm always checking my phone to remind, to remind myself of the schedule. I'm always checking my phone to remind myself of the schedule. So do, do you see that kind of feature there where he says me instead of my? So it, it so um, this this should if I was to say this, I would say I'm always checking my phone to check. Uh, to check my schedule. What was the what was the line again? Let me just play that again. Dragging around. I'm, I, yeah, it kind of a bit of both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I am always checking my phone to remind myself its schedule. Right. Yeah. To remind myself. So I would say to remind myself. <laughs> so I would say um, I'm I'm always checking my phone to remind myself of the schedule. But he's saying I'm always checking my phone um, to to remind myself of my schedule. I selectively forget something. I'm sure. I get frustrated at management. And I selectively forget some things and I get frustrated at management. For being in that, yeah, yeah. You know what I wanted to ask you? Uh, your, your son uh, recently turned four, yeah, right? Yeah. And I never realized how much he looks just like you. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh my God, he looks just like you. And when I so now they're talking about um, his four-year-old son, who, who, who who's recently turned four, so it's his birthday, and a doppelganger. Uh, can you could you let me know in the in the comment section what a doppelganger is? Hello to those of you who have just joined us. So a doppelganger is someone who looks exactly like you. It's kind of like your twin. Was his age, like, Ooh. yeah, I look even more like him, yeah. Man, so did, what did you do? Did you guys do anything special? What did you do for Freddie's birthday? Just, uh, just spent the day with him, really. Just uh, dressed the room up, made it look nice, and uh, cakes and presents, okay. pretty normal, but it was fun, really it's, nice. It's so funny because we were speculating about what the party might have looked like, and I was convinced it was a rager, there was a DJ, and I was like, That's what the, the party's for. That's next, next, year. That's next So they're basically describing what she thought the party would have been like. So he says, and let me just repeat what, what Louis says there. Now I know it's so just... he got a big fat cake, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a big fat cake, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's basically saying, Did you get him a cupcake? A cupcake is one of those small cakes that are like that size. Um, but then he Louis, Louis basically saying, No, like I got him a, a, a fat cake. I think he says a fat cake. Uh, a fat kind of like a big fat cake. I've never been I've never heard a um a cake being described in that way before. So good, obviously, to hear what your fans think about your music. But I mean, I felt like really warm in my heart when I saw Liam 
uh, oh, tweet like all his support and his love and and just basically saying that you know, he loves you and it's so exciting and just that you got through like so much and he's so supportive of you it's, it's amazing yeah it's lovely it's lovely um i think we all you know we're all supportive of each other um still which i think you know is t- you know i think we're all supportive of each other so he says you know i think we're all supportive 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 of each other Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing and also a nice little moment for the fans, I think. So, right. So he's pronouncing each other as each other. He's kind of saying it really quickly. Each other. Each other. Each other. Uh, hi, Nishi. Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia from Argentina. Video when you're trying out a new song, do you or any of the boys ever send a song and be like, what do you think about this, or does that not happen? Personally, I did more at the start, at the start of my career, I think, when I was kind of looking ah, for that. Opinion. Did you spot that? I did more at the start of my career. At the start of my career. At the start of my career. So he, so I would say at the start of my career, but he's saying at the start of my career. At the start of my career. So <laughs> it's quite, it is difficult to listen to. Um, Rohan says Zane's accent is better. Um, I disagree. One of my main one of my main messages on my channel is that one accent isn't better than another one. Um, all accents are equal, so I don't think um, Zane's accent is better. But I will um, analyze Zane's accent in a future video if you guys would like. In a bit more, uh, but I think since I found me feet, um, it doesn't really found me kind of feet. Thing. We just hear it on the radio. You know? We just hear it on the radio. So essentially, what that bit was about is. Um, He's basically saying he found my feet. You know, he had to find his feet. What does that mean, finding someone's feet? I had to find my feet. So once I found my feet, then everything was okay. I, I was publishing my songs on the radio and I didn't have to send it to other members of One Direction. So finding my feet basically means you're finding your confidence. So you're standing on your own two feet. So if someone says to you, you know, you could, um, you know, if in a workplace environment or, or in a school, um, a teacher can look at a, child, at a child and be like, you need to learn how to stand on your own two feet. You need to learn how to stand on your own two feet, which basically means you can't keep asking for help. You can't keep relying on others. You can't lean on others. You have to try and do it yourself. Stand on your own two feet, be independent and not lean on others. So Louis was basically saying it took him a while to, to stand on his own two feet. Oh, at the start of my career, I kind of, we just didn't. Oh. You're on the radio, you know. Now, I know you got a little reflective about your life in the album. Is there one particular lyric or song that's really hard for you to hear? No, not hard for me to hear, really. I think that's what, um, that's what I was lucky. I think being honest and at times being vulnerable in the lyric kind of comes easy to me. So it's not like listening back that, you know, it's uh, it's heavy for me. Right. One, one of the songs in the album, The Two of Us, which is about your mom, was that therapeutic for you? To, Definitely. To I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think- so one of the things here is that he didn't actually finish his question. Um, but oh, one second. My dad is speaking really loudly, one second. <laughs> ah, lockdown life, eh? You're like, um, every session, you know, it's, uh, it's heavy for me. Um, right, one, one of the songs in the album, The Two of Us, which is about your mom, was that therapeutic for you? Definitely. So he says... You know, one of the songs was about your mum. Uh, was that therapeutic to... Uh, was that therapeutic to... So he didn't actually finish his question. But this is the thing, um, especially in, like, radio interviews, and when you're in conversation, you don't always have to finish... Um, you don't actually have to finish your question because when when a conversation is flowing, you kind of know what, that, what the end of that question is going to be. So the end of that question, when he says, was it therapeutic to... He clearly was going to end it by saying, was it therapeutic to make? Was it therapeutic to sing? Was it therapeutic to, to produce? But he didn't finish his question, and Louis immediately understood that. feel like um, 
every session I was in, I've said this before, every session that I was in, it kind of lacked significance. I knew that I had to write this song um, and it was hard to write. I knew I had to write this song. So again, Louis actually dropping his T's. So he's using the glottal stop T. Um, so he's, you know, I, I knew I had to write this song. I knew I had to write this song. Anything else until I kind of got through that stage, really. Uh, and yeah, you know, it's an amazing experience for me and an experience as a songwriter I haven't had before. You know, people were coming up to me and telling me what those lyrics mean to them. Um, and, you know, it's, a, it's an emotionally heavy song, but the fact that there's a positive to it. I knew it was an emotional emotionally heavy song I knew it was an emotionally heavy song and, and people you know share these positive stories with me like that's really cool for me definitely I'm sure you have people oh so he says definitely definitely I think this is an accent of um from Yorkshire so it's like kind of like a Yorkshire feature um definitely definitely so I would say from South London I would say definitely definitely and I would really heavily pronounce the Y there definitely but then Louis pronouncing it definitely definitely let's listen to that one more time oh my video has disappeared give me a sec there we go well that you trust right when you go on this to it and, and people you know share these positive stories with me like that's really cool for me definitely and I'm sure you have definitely. people that you trust definitely I don't know if you heard that then. Trust, right? When you go in the studio, you trust. Like, does this sound good? Is this something that should be on the album? Uh, do you ever play your music for your lady? Do you trust her? Of course, of course, of course, yeah. course, yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so um, Louis is also, instead of saying, of course, he's saying, course, course, you know, course. As in, of course I play it for my lady. My lady means my wife or my girlfriend. Girlfriend and my mate. Um, you know, it's really important to get um, people's feedback, I think, definitely. All right. Well, have you seen yourself, because it did take a little bit longer than some people to put an album together, did you see yourself? Also, I've noticed he adds definitely to, like, all the end of his sentences, so he added definitely again there. Um, I think that's because uh, it's just kind of like a way to kind of finish your sentence. So, uh, you know how people add, you know, I went to shop, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, it's kind of like, and people add like, in a, in a sentence as well. Um, Louis tends to kind of fill the gap and fill the space with definitely, definitely, to kind of like keep the conversation going. He kind of says the word definitely, definitely. Growing as a songwriter or as a musician from when you first started doing it to today? Yeah, definitely. I think there are, there are there's a couple of songs in the album that I wrote that again. <laughs> literally like three years ago. And I think if you listen to them in comparison to songs like Kill My Mind or Walls, that you can so that so this is the thing, Louis. I, I don't think he has a strong Yorkshire accent. I don't think because uh, me personally, I I actually thought he had a lot of like London features in there. Um, but this is the thing, like uh, there are lots of similarities similarities between geographical areas in the UK as well as strong differences as well. I see the growth as a songwriter. There's right. a bit more maturity, I think. Oh look, so the way he said songwriter and maturity. That's how sometimes I would say it, right? So in London, we say songwriter, songwriter, and maturity, maturity. So we're dropping the T's really heavily there. So instead of saying maturity, it's maturity. So he, he reduces it to maturity and songwriter, songwriter. Let's, let, let's see if you can listen out for that. Let me rewind and play it again. And I think if you listen to them in comparison to songs like Kill My Mind or Walls, I think you can kind of see the growth as a songwriter. There's right. a bit more maturity, I think. All right, well, there's a lot more we want to know. Yes. The album's out today. Uh, sticking around, Louis Tomlinson's on the mashup. This is Hits 1. All right, good morning. It's the mashup on Sirius. Funniest thing ever, I need um, to know. Okay. Uh, you to throw up. Combination of a few things. Uh, lack of fitness. Um, lack of I fitness. I smoke quite a lot, and I'm not going to lie, I do smoke... Um, so he says, I do smoke quite a lot, not going to lie, not going to lie. So that, that's a really classic phrase that we use. Um, yeah, not going to lie. Um, it's just basically a way, a way to kind of introduce your next point. So um, what one of you guys, yeah, Aditya, you, you've mentioned, oh, you're, you've just commented, British accent is actually a lot harder than I thought. So uh, you could actually introduce your phrase by saying, not going to lie. Um, 
British accent is actually a lot harder than I thought, <laughs> right? So you could say, not going to lie. Not going to lie, British accent is a lot harder than I thought. Um, let's just read a few more of these comments just to say hello to everybody. Pradeep, hello. Good to see you. Um, 90, 1296, I think that's uh, Osama. Good to see you. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. So one comment is, ah, I'm pretty confused of pronunciation of words with man endings. For example, policeman, superman. Oh, okay, could you, can you clarify this? Yeah, um, I think it's an accent thing. So I would say policeman, but it'd be superman, um, anchorman, but it wouldn't be anchorman. Um, so, policeman, I think, hmm, I'll have to ha have a think about this one. I can make a video about this. Let me make, let me jot that down in my notes. So when words end in man, how to decide whether it's man or man. So just to clarify with your particular examples, it would be policeman, superman, anchorman. Uh, Wolf22 says, how's lockdown treating you? Um, it's pretty mad. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's going okay. I feel blessed to, you know, have a home, have food, have shelter, um, and, and have an internet connection. Honestly, um, there's a lot of people out there in the world who don't have that. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and luckily, me and my family are healthy and well. So I hope you guys are doing well too um, throughout lockdown. Let's analyse a few more of these phrases and then we can finish off for today. Good bit. On that day. Um, and also I got absolutely crippled by this guy, he's about 16. What does that mean? So he's talking about a time where something happened at his concert and he's saying, I got crippled by this guy. I got crippled by this guy, right? So what do you think it means to be crippled by this guy? I think it means to be kind of crushed by him. Maybe that's what's going on. Um, maybe this six foot guy has just crushed him. Maybe he's fallen on top of him. Um, crippled, as in, you know, you, you, if you're crippled, you, 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 your, your bones are broken and you can't move, you're, you're kind of paralyzed. So obviously he's exaggerating. Um, also he says got, got. So he, he pronounces it as got, got. Stone is professional. Let's probably rewind trying that. To make a name for himself. And I'm not going to lie, I've been smoking a bit on that day. Um, and also, I got absolutely crippled by this guy. He's about 16 stone, this professional, and he's trying to make a name for himself. And I actually got a pretty bad injury after that. But anyway, so I, I, ah, I've got pretty bad injury. I'm already feeling a little bit wheezy because of my fitness anyway. And I remember. He's feeling a little bit wheezy, like, as in if you can't breathe. You know that noise that you make? That's wheeze. It's like you can't breathe properly. It's like it's wheezy, you know. Stumbling off the pitch, singling for singling for a sub, and I walked off. Yeah, and I knew it was coming. And it's kind of that moment that some of us might have had when you leave the club, and there might be, there might be <laughs> so he's wheezing. He's going to throw up, and he says, "It reminds me of the club, not club." He doesn't pronounce it as club. He pronounces it as club, you know, club, and. What he means is when you leave the club um, drunk, you know, you get that feeling that you get when you're about to throw up. Um, I personally don't know what that's like because I'm not a massive drinker, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I went for a sub and I walked off, yeah, and I knew it was coming. And it's kind of that moment that some of us might have had when you leave the club and there might be, there might be 20 people looking at you, you know, and it was like, I did, and I was like, I know it's coming, and then... I know it's coming. I know it's coming. So he's not saying, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. He's saying, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Right? So the, the, the other difficult thing is probably, you know, with all that laughter in the background and it's very noisy. Um, this is the thing. When you're listening in day-to-day -day conversation in real life, you're not going to have perfect, you're not going to have the perfect um, background ambience. You know, when you're listening to someone, there might be like a train in the background. There might be like ambulance noises in the background. There's probably, 
native speakers might mumble, they might be speaking really fast. Um, so yeah, I, I get it. It, is, it probably is really difficult to understand how a native speaks. So um, that's why I decided to make this series, um, kind of doing these live streams, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I'm actually doing a live stream tomorrow, uh, a Tuesday at midday, 12 o'clock, London time, which is 4.30 India time. Um, and tomorrow's lesson, what is tomorrow's lesson about? So Wednesday's lesson is actually an advanced lesson. Um, I'm going to be analysing a poem and we're going to be discussing the features in that poem and so the language there is going to be difficult. But a few of you were asking, we want an advanced lesson. I was like, okay, cool, let's do an advanced lesson um, to really push your vocabulary and push your understanding. Um, tomorrow is an exciting one. It's to analyse Harry Potter's accent. Um, so I thought that would be a really good way and a fun way to continue on from last week's video, which was Hermione's accent. Um, so, Gucci, you 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 actually said your name earlier. Um, I can't find it in the comment section actually. But Gucci asks, can you say often and often and schedule and schedule? So I actually say schedule, and then I say often, even though it should be often. I say often, and then I say schedule. Nelson says, could you please pronounce the following words? Uh, water. Fantastic, yesteryear, and rendezvous. And Gucci says, Isabel. Cool, Isabel, I remember that. Um, and then Shahzad says, speak in an Indian accent once, please. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable doing that now, um, but maybe in the future. Because um, we're analysing Louis' accent in this video, which is a Doncaster accent. Um, do, 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 do. let me just read, make sure I haven't missed out any other comments. Cool. Um, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, analyzing Louis's accent from Louis's accent from One Direction. Now, yeah, they were speaking very fast in that interview, and that's why I chose it because I wanted to kind of really break down what that conversation was about, what he was saying, some of the phrases that he was saying. Um, so I hope you found that useful. <clears throat> Um, Julia says, I learned to speak British English, so I am shocked by American English. <laughs> okay, this is the thing. When you're practicing, um, you can kind of listen out for various accents. You know, you, you, I don't think you should just be learning. I mean, you can learn to speak in one accent, but in terms of listening, you should really hone in in your skills to understand various accents because, you know, we live, we live in a globalised world. You're going to come across so many different accents. Um, so that would be my advice to you. Um, Budnama says, watch his previous video. Yeah, <laughs> you can definitely um, go ahead and watch some of my previous videos. And Mia says, love this. I love Louis. Thanks for doing this. You're very welcome. So I really enjoyed that, guys. I'm sorry about the one hour delay today. Um, so tomorrow I'll be uh, conducting the lesson at midday, 12 o'clock London time, which is 430 India time for Harry Potter's accent. Don't miss it. And I'll see you tomorrow and on Wednesday. Take care, guys. Stay safe. See you soon. See you tomorrow.